Hey, Critical Analysis, here's your video for your Chapter 2 lecture. So this will go through the contents of Chapter 2. As I did in Chapter 1, I'm going to rely mostly on the PowerPoint and then just kind of pick out a few things in the actual text. And then on your own, I encourage you to go ahead and read through Chapter 2 more thoroughly on your own, as well as review the PowerPoint as needed inside your Blackboard course. So as a reminder, inside your Blackboard course, we are going to be, this is going to align closely with week two here. So you'll see the chapter two overview is right there. You're gonna see in the read folder, you have a link to the chapter where in this week you're reading chapters one and two. And then you'll also have the review where you'll have a link to your chapter two PowerPoint. So that is where I'm pulling all the information. So the objectives for this chapter is to talk about strategic reading. And then you're actually gonna see some, I think overlap from chapter one to talk about like strategic reading strategies and the reading process. So this is gonna kind of build on a little bit of what we talked about in chapter one, go into a little bit more detail on a couple of things. So first question is like, what is strategic reading? So what do we mean when we say strategic reading? It's kind of what it sounds like, like using a strategy while you read, but not only using those strategies, knowing when to use them and why you're using them and how they're going to enhance your reading and overall comprehension. And so here are some premises to strategic reading, previewing, questioning, uh, recalling. Again, you'll see that a lot of this we already talked about back in chapter one, like previewing the text, the chapter, making questions, connecting what you know to what you previously have learned, um, and then spending time, you know, after you've read on what you understood. Also talking about main idea and supporting details and drawing inferences. Those are things that we're going to see specifically these last three in future chapters. So we'll talk a little bit about them today, but there are whole chapters dedicated to those. So what are strategic readers? There are four types of readers in general, and you're going to see this question pop up on your text and skill sheet for chapter two as well. There we go. So in chapter two, I want to pull up right here because this has a little bit more detail to it. So here are the general types of readers. Tacit readers don't have any awareness of how they think when they're reading. So this is us because we all do this. Whenever we are passive with our reading, maybe we're just kind of reading it to check it off our to-do list. We're not really aware of what we're reading or what we're thinking while we read. We kind of zone in and out. We don't want to do that. I know sometimes we happen to fall in that category, but we don't want to do that with our academic reading. Then we have aware learners. These are a little bit more like you understand like, oh, hey, I don't, I don't understand what I'm reading. You know that, but you don't necessarily either know how to fix it or maybe you just don't, don't <laughs> fix it. You don't employ the strategies that you know to use. So aware is a little better because at least it indicates that, hey, something's not working something's not connecting, what do I do about it? And that leads into strategic readers. This is when, okay, I know something's not working. I'm going to use some strategies to help fix my understanding. So it kind of builds from awareness. I know what I need to do. I'm going to fix my reading. My reading. And then we have reflective learners. And so this is kind of like the highest level, if you will, of these types of readers. They are able to not only be aware and use strategies, but then they also want to use those in different ways and focus on different purposes. They reflect on their reading and how things can be revised and fixed. So those are the different types of learners. We want to definitely kind of veer away from one and two and typically fall in the category of three and four. We wanna be strategic and we wanna reflect on what we've read. Here are the three, the stages of reading. And we've already talked about this in chapter one. So that's why you're going to see a little bit of some overlap here. So there's a previewing stage, right? Before you begin reading, you want to go ahead and ask questions to yourself, pose questions, find the questions that you need to answer, have them in the back of your mind, know what you're reading for, like what's your goal, what's your purpose, activate your prior knowledge. Here are some other things that you're doing while you're still kind of in that previewing stage. And then you're moving into actually like, okay, I'm going to read now. I've set the groundwork. So now I'm going to predict what I'm going to read. I am going to read it section by section and make connections to what I already know. 
understand that, hey, if I don't comprehend what I'm reading, I need to go back and fix it somehow. Annotate, underline, highlight, whatever strategy you prefer. Again, we do that after we've read a section. We go back and we annotate. We go back and we highlight. <clears throat> Excuse me. We do those things. And then there's the recall stage, which is just what it sounds like. What did I read? What connections can I make? What questions can I answer? Um, what did I not understand? Do I need to go back and revisit? Okay. Here are some other like in-depth strategies. So this is talking about previewing, so kind of like specifically how to do it. How do we preview? Well, we look over the material and ask questions and try to connect with the information that you have. You want to look to see, you know, why am I reading this? Again, if the teacher doesn't give you your own purpose, you come up with it. Oh, by the end of this chapter, I'm going to define 10 vocabulary words, or I'm going to be able to put things into my own, you know, summary. Here is signpost for previewing. This will come up again in your, your text sheet. So what are the things that I look for specifically when I preview? So you know, headings and subheadings and any kind of visuals and anything that's going to stick out to you like numbers or bold or italic. When we preview, we want to activate schemata, which is our network that we already know about a subject. So if you are a nursing major, you are, even if you're brand new, you probably already have some background knowledge, some background information on the field of nursing. And so when you preview something, you're activating that schemata. You're like, okay, here's what I already know. How's it going to fit in with what I'm about to learn? And so the more kind of bridges you're able to draw between what you already know and what you're about to learn, the better your understanding is going to be. And so whenever you are reading, you want to be able to kind of integrate and think about what you're reading. What are you predicting? How are you comparing information? And then how can I make connections to the information that I already know to what I'm learning now? Here are some other strategies while you're reading. Again, we talked about these previously. So I'm going to, you know, only read a couple pages at a time and check how am I understanding this? Um, if I don't understand it, what am I going to do? Am I going to go back and look up a word? Am I going to ask for help? Am I going to underline, take notes? So those are all things you want to do while you are reading. All of this comes down to, maybe you've heard this word before, metacognition. It's like thinking about thinking, basically. It's thinking about your own thinking. That's why it's called like, it's a meta type in phrase. Um, thinking about thinking because you're thinking about your thinking while you're thinking. You know, how aware are you of your understanding? Are you able to be in tune enough while you're reading or while you're studying to say, oh, this isn't clicking. I need to go back and fix it. You know, if you're using flashcards while you study, are you able to kind of cognitively be aware that this strategy is working for me or this is not working for me? What do I need to do to improve going forward? So really making sure that you're aware of your thinking and making adjustments as needed. So how can you continue to do that? Well, you want to think out loud, stay focused. That's one of the things our textbook does talk about is the think aloud. I don't know if any of you do this. I certainly do. Sometimes to process information, I have to say it out loud. And so I might be, you know, at home by myself or I might be at home with people around me or in my office, sometimes even in my classroom before a, a class starts, I might be just kind of thinking through something that really helps me understand and think through a problem. And so that's a really great metacognitive strategy. Other things to kind of improve that metacognition as it relates to thinking is to be aware of how you're going to monitor your comprehension, how you're going to correct anything when you come across it and you're not sure, know about your reading in general. And then of course, the last stage of your reading after you've gone through the previewing and the actual reading is recall. What have you learned? How can you connect it to what you already understand? How can you evaluate your information or your understanding of that evaluation of the reading? The last couple slides kind of talk about, you know, how do we recall? And there is such a strong connection between reading and writing that writing is a great way to help you recall information. And so if you think back to like your elementary school days, my um, two of my children are in like the lower elementary grades right now. And my second grader has to do this still. He has to write down his spelling words. And even my fifth grader, he has some spelling words in some of his classes. And so he'll come home with a packet where they have to write the word so many times. They have to make connections. They have to define it. So they really have like a network of it. 
But oftentimes teachers will have their young students write their spelling words like three times each or five times each, whatever it is, because there is a connection between reading and writing. And so whenever you can try to recall something, if you can write it to recall, that is a great way to try to make connections to get your thoughts down on paper. So other ways that you can do it beyond just writing is to teach it. It's a fantastic way to make sure you understand. If you can teach someone else information, you know you understand it. You know, review each section. This is what I talked about before, like really segmenting your reading so you're not reading all at once. And then really focus in on anything that seems to be kind of confusing. Some other recall strategies, we talked about writing, you know, and that could not even necessarily be writing a summary, which is one way, but writing annotations, filling in notes, um, going back and filling in a study guide, anything that's gonna connect that reading writing connection. You also just want to think about it in general, reflect on it. How does this reading connect to the chapter? How does the reading connect to the class? How does it connect to your major? And how do they all work together? And how can you use the information that you're learning? Okay. Some other things you want to think about is kind of looking again at the relationship between the text that you read and the bigger picture, maybe the assessment coming up, the program that you're in, and then ultimately the career that you're going into. You might also have visuals. If you're a visual person, that is a great way to also spend some time recalling, drawing a visual, a table, a diagram, whatever that might look like to make sure that you're understanding all those ideas together. All right, so that is the meat, if you will, of chapter two. So I encourage you now on your own to go through and you can see it's gonna go through all of the things we just talked about a little bit more in detail, like I'm using the table of contents over here to scroll through. This is gonna go through you know, the signposts for previewing. You can see that there is more information like on metacognition and how to go through and understanding how that works. So again, I encourage you to look through, get familiar with chapter two, and then come back for your chapter two vocabulary video and your chapter two assignment video, all of those things, all right? See you guys next time. Bye.